Um, cell division is one of the most critical processes of life. And much of what we know about it today, we've learned through microscopy. We've been looking at dividing cells under the microscope for well over a century now. Famously, uh, Walter Fleming published these and other incredible illustrations in 1882. They depict uh, the process in amazing detail. They show um, the chromosomes here first moving to the center of the cell and then separating in two sets uh, which migrate to opposite poles of the cell. Um, and later when the cell divides here down the middle, these two sets, which are exact copies of each other, will become the genome of the daughter cells. Um, we can also see already here um, these filaments actually connecting chromosomes to the poles of the cells and seemingly moving them first to the center, then to the poles. Um, Fleming called this process mitosis and we call these filamentous bipolar structure the mitotic spindle. Um, today, thanks to the continuing advancement of microscopy techniques, we have an even clearer picture of the spindle. And crucially, we know that the main structural component, the filaments, are tubulin microtubules, here shown in green. These are extremely dynamic structures that continuously alternate between phases of rapid growth and shrinkage. And there are thousands of them in the spindle, very densely packed. Um, they gain access to chromosomes in early mitosis and then seem to reorganize themselves around chromosomes, sorting themselves into this bipolar structure. Now, we don't fully understand how this happens yet. For example, we don't know where exactly microtubules are generated. They can be generated at the spindle poles, around chromosomes, and also on the outer walls of pre-existing microtubules in a manner dependent on a protein complex called Augmin. But we don't know what number of microtubules is generated where. Also, we don't really understand how, once generated, microtubules can find the very small binding structures on the surface of individual chromosomes that they can attach to. Our, understandings, uh, our understanding of these processes um, has been hampered by the limitations of available imaging techniques. And every time technology advances, that's an opportunity uh, to collect more and better data that we can analyze so that we can find the answers we're looking for. And that's what happened with my project. Um, through collaborations with the microscope developers and image analysis specialists in the US, we were able to visualize microtubules in the entire volume of the spindle um, in high resolution and for extended periods of time. Um, here you can see the growing uh, tips of individual microtubules we can detect all of these in every movie frame and analyze their distribution within the spindle. By doing that, we were able to determine what fraction of microtubules was generated in different regions of the spindle. The results were very surprising to us in that the fraction that came from augment-dependent generation on the walls of pre-existing microtubules was much, much higher than anyone was expecting. Furthermore, we found that the distribution of microtubule tips um, in the spindle was not random. And instead, it seemed that microtubule growth was strongly biased towards those attachment surfaces on chromosomes. Presumably, this is because so many of them are not generated in random positions and in random directions, but on the walls of pre-existing microtubules that have already attached. And this helps explain how cells can so efficiently assemble a spindle around chromosomes and connect each one to the right pole of the cell.